My name is Samuel Harvester, and I'm developing stable hydrogen catalysts for the system. My name is Sana Zaposi, and I work on the preparation and investigation of low-cost, stable membranes. My name is Didif, and I investigate mechanical designs for advanced sealing technologies in this system. Hi, I'm Brenda Cantu, and I focus on the characterization of the battery performance. My name is Jakub Budarczyk, and I'm developing mathematical models and simulations for hydrogen bromine flow batteries. The hydrogen bromine redox 4 battery utilizes bromine and hydrogen as charge storage mediums. A central stack, similar to a fuel cell, contains the electrodes and membrane, whilst the hydrogen and bromine electrolytes are stored in external tanks. During charging, hydrobromic acid is converted to bromine, whilst the protons travel through the membrane and form hydrogen gas. Discharge sees the opposite occur, with the hydrogen split into protons and the bromine oxidized to form bromide reforming the hydrobromic acid. An essential component of this is the hydrogen catalyst. This is currently made from platinum nanoparticles supported on carbon. The hydrogen catalyst either oxidizes the hydrogen if the battery is discharging, or reduces the hydrogen if the battery is charging. Unfortunately, the catalyst is degraded by bromine species which have crossed over the membrane, which results in platinum dissolution and performance loss. To solve this, I have developed inorganic coatings for the catalyst, which are deposited from the gas phase. This coating prevents bromide and tribromide from reaching the platinum surface without inhibiting the hydrogen, thus preventing the catalyst degradation. Another critical component of the battery is the membrane. Membranes are essential for the battery, as they allow the necessary protons to travel between electrodes while preventing the other species in the electrolyte from crossing as well as preventing an electrical short circuit between the two electrodes. The selectivity of the membrane towards protons is especially important in the hydrogen bromide redox flow batteries due to the causative nature of the bromide towards the hydrogen catalyst if it crosses over. To improve the transport properties and decrease the bromine species crossover of the membrane at a lower cost, I employ wire electrospinning to create blend porous mats based on polyvinylidene fluoride. These mats are then processed into dense membranes by hot pressing. Lastly, the prepared membranes and catalysts are laminated together as membrane and electrode assembly. A good battery must be safe and reliable, therefore leakage must be avoided and sealing technology goes hand in hand together with cell design. Stack battery designs require flexible seals, but due to the corrosive nature of the electrolyte, fluorelastomers tend to be the first choice, but they are very prone to excessive swelling. A kind of peroxycure TPDM is a more reliable and up to 9 times cheaper solution. With laser cutting technology, complex shapes can be prototyped from less than the sheets, and surface modification adds flexibility into the design by increasing contact stress. This evolves to enhanced sealing performances. The developed components must be characterized in an operating cell, thus a laboratory-scale hydrogen bromine redox flow battery was developed together with a test rig that is equipped for the reading of localized current density measurements and the investigation of the composition of the crossover electrolyte. Typical characterization techniques analyze the cell as a unit, neglecting local changes. What we do is using a segmented electrode as a method of obtaining localized current density measurements in situ, thus accessing a higher degree of resolution. In this way, it is possible, for example, to probe at which stoichiometries does mass transport limitation begin to manifest. To better understand the phenomena governing the flow battery cell operation, it is vital to combine empirical studies with mathematical modeling and simulation. Simulations provide the ability to better interpret experimental data. For instance, I analyze cell voltage, which is related to thermodynamics, or fluid flow, which impacts cell performance limits. I'm collaborating with experimenters to validate, that is to confirm, the mathematical models and their underlying assumptions. I'm also visiting laboratories to conduct my own, more fundamental experiments, which allow me to extract pertinent parameters influencing the cell operation, 
such as transfer properties of ions or thermodynamic quantities such as half cell potential. Combining the research we have conducted over the past few years, we have assembled a demonstrator battery to present the advances we have achieved. Here I have my hydrogen bromine redox flow battery. On one side, I am pumping an aqueous solution of hydrobromic acid and bromine. On the other side, I am circulating hydrogen. This is a two-cell stack that is the flexibility that redox flow batteries give us. We can adapt the voltage output by adding more cells in series. I can also increase my current output by increasing the size of my active area. For a higher capacity, on the other hand, I would increase the electrolyte volume. From here we connect to the power electronics, leveling out the power output. I then connect to my real-world application, in this case, a typical household. In my real-world application, in times when I would have a lot of wind, the wind turbine would directly power my household. All the excess energy could be used to charge my electrolyte. When the wind supply is over and I am not generating electricity anymore, I can switch on my battery and start generating energy from my charged electrolyte. 